Welcome to a tech review of the GWM Aura. Now the Aura is a small electric car, but I like to think of it as like, it's more of a gadget than a car at this point, because there's like a load of tech in here. comes in a range of different models. It starts with the 310 and it goes all the way to the 400 GT. And the number really indicates the amount of battery range that the car has. This being the GT has 400 kilometers of range. The car produces 126 kilowatts, which is actually quite a lot and it, it does all parts properly. And all of this range and all of the power comes from a 63 kilowatt battery, which is installed in the floor below the car. So it gives it quite a low center of gravity. It is a heavy car with the batteries, all electric cars are. But because they put the batteries in the floor, it gives it a really low center of gravity, which makes it fantastic for cornering. So as with any electric car, this has an e-pedal um, or an electric pedal option. And essentially what that does is the minute you lift off the accelerator, it begins regenerating energy and it tries charging the battery. And this is smart technology because if you're going down a hill, you're driving anywhere, when you lift off, it just gets a little bit of charge back into the battery. Now, I've experimented with this when we played. Flat out, this car will use all 126 kilowatts. And it's got a little indicator on the dash here that actually shows that to you. So it shows you how much power you're using at any given point. Then when you lift off enough, for instance, if you're coasting down a big hill, it will regen up to 50 kilowatts on your downhill if you just lift off. So it actually makes this car wildly efficient on the 63 kilowatt hour battery. So getting charge into this battery can be done one of two ways. Again, as with all electric cars. You could do an AC charge or you could do a DC charge. Now the Aura does not come with an AC charging cable that fits into an AC public charger, but it does come with an AC charging cable or brick that plugs into your home. So long as you're not depleting the car down to like 11% every day, you can charge it at home. Now the plug that I had this plugged into that was charging, was charging at five amps. The charger though is rated for 13 amps. So if you do have a socket in your house, that does have a higher rating, the charger can go up to 13 amps, so it will charge a lot quicker. And in that theory, you should be able to charge the car from 20% full in about 10 hours. Before we get to the tech of the interior, let's talk about what this car looks like. So it's quite a cute little car. It looks small on the outside, but it's actually quite a spacious car. This feels bigger than a Golf is on the inside, just to give you some kind of perspective. But I absolutely love the design. It looks like a little beetle. It looks like a mini. People have like given me a range of different sort of, ah, it looks like a this thing, it looks like a that thing. But the reality is this looks like an aura. There is actually nothing on the road as cute and quaint and cool as this at the moment. The base price for these cars starts at about 630,000 Rand, which currently makes it the cheapest new electric car you can buy in South Africa. This comes in at about a tablet of 50,000. Um, it is the GT, it's got more capacity, it's got all the cool interior, and you can only get the red interior on this, a sort of a black and red combination, and you can only get the red brake calipers and the red wheels on the GT. The others are kind of a bit more plain, just black on the inside, and silver wheels and silver calipers. And then of course there is a range of tech on this car that just comes completely standard. There's not a lot in terms of optional extras. So you have an electronic tailgate, it does the whole foot action thing where you just kick your foot underneath and it opens the tailgate. On the inside you have an inductive charging mat. What is noticeable for me is the lack of type C ports. So you have USB A ports, there are two of them. One of them does data and one of them does charging. Once you plug your phone in, you do have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto if you're that way inclined. And then we get to the two screens in the front here, right? So these are 10.25 inch screens. One is called the Virtual Cluster and the other one is a dual touch screen. So the Virtual Cluster has all the good GW bits going on it. So like it does that whole sort of shows you the car, shows you the lanes, shows you the traffic around you if you get too close to the emergency lane, for instance, it'll beep and highlight. It's very, very clever use of tech. There's a lot of cameras, and a lot of radars around this car, and it displays it quite nicely for you there. On the left, you have your battery supply, your speed. On the right, it's adjustable. You can kind of set different things. I quite like seeing how much power I'm using and how much power I'm regening in there. 
So to me, that's like a cool view. Then we get to this 10 inch dual touch screen. The menus are very simple and actually quite intuitive. And I do like that. There's vehicle settings, there's system settings. It shows you a power system, mobile services, etc. And then you kind of press the other button and it just shows you all your, all your input, local radio, Bluetooth, USB, etc. Um, the settings are pretty straightforward. They're all there. You go through menus. It's a, it's a good clean layout. I've definitely seen cars that are far worse than this. When you unlock the car, the car is turned on, right? So there's actually no power button or start button in the car. The minute you sit down and engage a gear, the screens come on. And there's actually this cute little animation that plays. It's a picture of koi fish swimming in a pond and um, it freezes. You have a picture of frozen fish on your screen for two to three minutes before it just kind of catches up. You can't do anything there in the meantime. So you can't activate the aircon. You can't, you literally just have to wait for that to go away. Now it doesn't do it every single time. It just does it occasionally. What I will say about this though, is the Bluetooth, despite being noisy areas, works perfectly. The screen is responsive. It's really high quality. It's got great pixel density and it's really bright in the sunlight. So even in a sort of sunny Cape Town day, you can see that screen perfectly. I've driven some cars, especially in the budget range, where the screen just, especially in, in harsh sunlight, just is sort of not really very visible. And then of course, it's got all the sort of safety tech features where it does cross lane assist, it does pedestrian recognition, it's got keyless entry, but only keyless entry on the driver door. So you have to walk up to that door it's got a very interesting camera vibe going on which I think is particularly brilliant the minute you indicate or go slow enough and go around the corner it switches to the camera especially Chinese cars do these days the minute it does that it gives you a top-down panoramic view of the car and where you are and then on the left switches to a left side and right side view of the wheels so if you're going around a corner it really helps you know where the curb is prevents you clipping the curb and any sort of issues, anything you could run over, drive over, etc. So, the long and the short of the GWM Aura. I love this little car. I think the price point is fantastic. 800 grand for this car. In the electric car space is absolutely brilliant. I would absolutely buy one of these if I was going to buy an electric car. I would, however, just kind of go, I really have to do a software update to fix those little annoying things. I'm sure they're aware of it. Like this is a new car, it's new software, there's a whole bunch of new stuff. It's gonna be fixed in like no time.